Hello, my name is Andrew Sullivan, and I'm with the Red Hat Cloud Platforms Business Unit. Today we're going to be reviewing OpenShift 4 resource management, specifically the impact of using limit ranges and quotas to protect your cluster resources. First inside of our project, we're going to create the limit and quota. By describing the limit range, we can see that this one has minimum, maximum, and default request and limit constraints. This ensures that all pods created in the cluster have at least some resources allocated to them. The quota prevents the user from consuming more than their fair share of resources. The first pod that we will look at has no resource request or limit defined. When the pod is created, OpenShift automatically assigns the request and limit according to what is defined in the limit range. Because the resource request is less than the limit, this pod will receive a QoS class of burstable. The second pod has only a limit defined. When we create this pod, OpenShift will automatically create a resource request that matches the limit. This will result in the pod having a QoS class of Guaranteed. This pod is requesting more resources than is allowed by the limit range. When we create this pod, OpenShift will refuse to even attempt because it exceeds the values of the limit range. This file contains a request for four pods, each one requesting an equivalent amount of resources. These requests fall within the allowed range. However, after several requests, the quota for the project will be exceeded. The result is that the final pod is not created. From the web interface, we can browse to our project and see the resources that have been created. Note on the screen that there is almost no resources actually being used by our pods. However, when we review the dashboard, the resource request shows the amount of CPU and memory which has been allocated against the quota. We can also see this information by browsing to the quota status page. The limit range information is also visible through the GUI, and all of these objects can be edited by using the relevant screen in the interface. Thank you for joining me today. Please be sure to watch for more videos about OpenShift 4 functionality in the future.